Happy Wednesday, y'all. I hope that everyone is doing well. Welcome back to another Adobe Live. Um, I am calling in from Phoenix, Arizona. My name is Idara Akpah. I am going to be your host for today. And today we are joined by Jorde. And I'm really excited for today's session. So I hope that you guys are too. Um, go ahead and put where you are joining us from in the chat, right? So whether you are here on Behance or you are watching from Adobe or excuse me, watching from YouTube land, um, go ahead and drop in the comments where you are joining us from. Um, just quick, a quick welcome. I already see everyone is saying hi to each other in the chat. I love that. So I am calling from Phoenix, Arizona, like I said before. And Jordan, I believe that you are in Los Angeles, correct? Yes, I am. Yes, LA, LA. Yes. <laughs> so we have a really exciting session up for us. I see Oliver is watching from the UK. Yes, wonderful. Um, so where, drop where you guys are, drop, are joining from. Jeremy from Los Angeles. Love to see y'all. And just as always, thank you so much for joining us on Adobe Live. If you haven't already, make sure that you please subscribe to our new Adobe Live channel on YouTube. So that way you can stay up to date on the latest streams and also participate in the Adobe Live community as well as so much more. And of course, this week, as you guys know, February is the month of Black History Month. And so this week we are going to honor Black History Month. Adobe Live is going to feature a lineup of Black creators that will showcase their workflows and creativity during the stream. So we have a lot of great things um, lined up for the week. And I'm also really excited because I have my friend Jorde here. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Jorde um, just to go ahead and introduce himself, show a little bit about his work before we get started. Hi, my name is Jorde. Um, uh, I am a uh... Los Angeles based photographer. I am originally from Ivory Coast, North Africa. Um, I've been uh, doing photography for, oh my God, that's my fourth year, time flies. Huh. Uh, no, my third year, yes, third year, for three years now, yes. <laughs> <laughs> for three years now, and um, yeah, I just love promoting us, promoting black beauty, black talent, black culture. Um, being African, I haven't had enough just positive influences when it comes mm -hmm. to uh, um you know what we see on tv and what we see in the magazine so i'm just excited to have this yes. every three the world we're okay. excited for you so go ahead and show us a little bit of your, about your portfolio but there's okay. already a question for you somebody says um asked if you speak french Je parle français, oui, c'est ma première langue. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> i'm fluent that's my first language <laughs> So let's get to the website. Welcome to my little world, Jordé Vili. Uh, Jordé Vili, just a little breakdown. It's a mix of Jordé and creativity. Jordé Vili, bam. So create what you love and love what you create is something that I live by. And uh, let's get into it. Let's get into my portfolio. Um, uh, I love wow. a nice editorial and uh, I just love to play around with mm -hmm. uh, aligning different skin tones and just with the poses. Um, do you guys have uh, any preference? Do you want to open uh, one file in particular? Let's let's <laughs> open up. I'm really going back to that blondie afro. So let's Ooh. open that and, and, and okay. show that. Okay. And then see where that gets us. Yes. So blondie afro, she's actually black and Irish. And uh, it was just, we had this vision of big, big hair. So we custom made a huge wig um, that she wore. And that was actually one of, that was my second studio shoot. I'm uh. usually a natural light guy. And I was like, okay, I'm taking up the challenge and we're doing it. And it, I just think it just looks magical. Oh, I love, I love, I hope y'all love, 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 love the kind of work you're already seeing. And I, I hope it makes you excited for the, the session for today because okay. me, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, for today's session, let me just uh, give a breakdown. This is my favorite show ever. This shot in particular is my absolute yes. favorite. It just screams me. Um, it's strong, it's black, it's feminine, and it's just beautiful. So Absolutely I, stunning. Yes. Awesome. So what do we have planned for today? Okay. So for today, uh, here's kind of like a guideline. Um, uh, we're talking about editing deep skin tones. And uh, this is like a reference to me. Beautiful dark skin. Um, editing, well, but without sacrificing the texture. Mm -hmm. 
without sacrificing the texture. When you zoom in, you see it can still look natural and we still have a breath of freshness to it. Mm -hmm. So this is our guideline and uh, let's get into it. Yes. Uh, I linked up with uh, some twins and we made some magic. So oh, I'm gonna edit something special for you guys today. So I'm just gonna open my files. Perfect. And while you do that, if y'all have any, let, let me just tell you this real quickly. Everyone loves your work. <laughs> I'm seeing stunning, amazing. Oh my goodness, gorgeous. Oh my so gosh. I, I feel like the the chat is ready for you today. So if y'all have any uh, questions throughout the session, please be sure to drop them in the chat. Uh, so that way we can ask and just make this as interactive as we can. Awesome. So I'm going to I'm going to turn it back over to you. Follow me on Instagram, by the way. Oh, yes, please. Also follow him on Instagram. I believe the, the host will. Yes. There you go. Let's get Perfect. started. OK, boom. So I have a special picture for you today. Boom. Let's go. So first, I'm going into camera raw to do like the basic, you know, edit. Uh, I'm going to raise my exposure. A tiny bit. Just, um, um, are we still good? Can you still see my whole screen? Yeah. yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Boom. So I'm going to go ahead and just raise it up to... Okay, 20 is fine for me today. Literally 25. No, 20. I'm a Libra, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, raise my uh, highlight a bit. I, us I usually love to do it at 15. No specific reason. <laughs> just like the way it looks. Um, I go a lot by looks and feels, so whatever it tells me, whatever it shows me, I just go for it. Uh, vibrant, I always put my vibrance at 5. And uh, sharpen either 49 or 50. I'm feeling risky today, so 50. Um, noise reduction, as always, I put it at 12. Yeah, that's okay, perfect. I am ready to go. Bam. Do you usually keep your numbers at that same kind of point for like sharpening your noise reduction for all of your yes. work or just, okay. Always, always the same. The only thing I would change is probably the exposure. It varies mm -hmm. on the picture. Of course. Um, noise reduction is 12, sharpening either 49 or 50. Perfect. I sharpen even more when I get to, um... okay. Lovely. Oh, I love this photo. Just one, how like, one them being twins <laughs> that is yes i always i wish i was a twin <laughs> our picture escaped us there you go perfect they, they tried to run away from us okay oh somebody asked how is your wednesday going me mine yes yours it is going great i am teaching school to be with you guys <laughs> 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 a fun way to yes. <laughs> go about your Listen, day <laughs> we need to do what we have to do okay we we work in here um oh little background i am uh i'm completing my master's in filmmaking to be a director so it's a lot of work but we in it yes. so i'm gonna start by applying my frequency separation action um i'm more of a frequency separation guy um and can you give like a brief understanding of just what frequency separation is? Um, honestly, frequency separation is a mix of texture and skin, as you can see mm -hmm. here. We have a mask, um, but it's mainly to, you know, I use it to clean up the skin, um, uh, remove the blemishes, uh, sample and blend the skin. Love it. That's mainly what I use it for and removing, uh, for example, if this bothers me, I can remove it with my healing tool and I'll show you guys more as I go along. Okay. Love it. So you guys pick top or bottom. Which face are we starting with? Let's see. Do y'all want to do <laughs> start with the top twin or the bottom twin? Which one are you <laughs> feeling? <laughs> Who are we starting with today? And I really just real quick, I love frequency separation too. I use it in my work um, just because it, it just keeps everything so natural. Yes. Um, and so sometimes when I first started doing um, editing, I remember like um, a lot of people would like blur the skin and you don't want to blur it to where it just looks like nothing's there. Yeah. You want to maintain the skin yeah. texture. All right. So um, someone said top face. Okay. Okay. Um, I see someone say, why not both? We'll get, I think we'll do both. <laughs> like, you know, why not? Let's start with the, let's start with the top one and then we'll, okay. we'll make our way. We're going to go with the top. So we're zooming in a bit, um, just like that. And uh, as you can see, 
I picked this picture for today because black skin is complex. Absolutely. Um, it is complex. I see a bunch of non-black photographers who struggle with editing black skin. And I'm not gonna lie, it's complex. Um, we have hyperpigmentation, we have discolorations, mm -hmm. and it just it's the beauty of us. We are Absolutely. so even in the face, the melanin just expresses itself in different ways. And uh it's very interesting to edit because it can be a challenge because you see different tones within one face and you don't want to make it all uniform mm -hmm. all time. sometimes you Absolutely. have to detect the face and what it looks like and just work with what you have okay so i go on my skin layer and i uh, go to my healing brush tool keep it on normal and we're gonna boom okay got my brush so i'm gonna start with this little blemish right here mm -hmm. Um, as you can see, skin is pretty good, but you know, mostly the blemish. So I'm gonna sample this part of the skin. Oh, and just like that. Just like that, it's gone. <laughs> just like that, it's gone. But let me do a little bit so I can show you guys the before and after. But yeah. Are you guys excited about this month? What do you guys yes. have planned? Yes, what do y'all have planned? For the month of February. Oh, actually, before we get into that, somebody already threw a question up in here. Okay. So let's see. Um, someone said, I have a question. How can we reduce bright light in a photo? Like if there's a person and he has too much light on his face, how do, would you essentially reduce that? Mm -hmm. Are we talking natural, artificial? I mean, does it even matter? Um, I don't know if it matters. Let's start just to yeah. give the option of natural light since I feel like a lot of a lot of people generally start with shooting natural yeah. light. That's one thing with light, mostly uh, when as a film student uh, that we talk about, you have to make sure your lighting, your lighting is right. Absolutely. Because once it's done, mm. There are certain things that can't be fixed, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, there are certain things that can't be fixed. If it's too bright, sometimes I try to add some contrast. I reduce the exposure a bit. Mm -hmm. I try to add some highlight or add some vignettes. I love vignettes because it, you know, mm -hmm. brings in, yeah. Um, you can use your curve, your curve tool, and go down, mm -hmm. drag it down. So it would reduce the overall exposure and brightness of the picture all together. Absolutely. And that could help. And if it doesn't help, hey, make it work. <laughs> make it work, make it the aesthetic because nobody's gonna yes. know. It's yes. your and reason. Then, and then someone else, I, I guess, so they were actually talking about, they want to know also with artificial light, how would you suggest with artificial light? Artificial light, um, with the, for example, with the Blondie Afro shoot, it was one of my first times really dealing with um mm -hmm. artificial light on a lighter skin tone on the light mm. so that was very interesting i was scared of making her look too bright too orange mm -hmm. yellow even with editing afterwards yeah um so test before you shoot please yes yes <laughs> test before you shoot i think that's my best advice uh make sure you test before you shoot mm -hmm. test the lighting because a lot of things cannot be cannot be properly corrected. Exactly. Yeah. Especially if you if, if the shot is too overexposed. Right. It's it's difficult to bring back all of that information and detail. It's kind of lost at that point. So I agree that yeah. testing your light, um, changing, you know, if you have to change the power if your light is too powerful, maybe changing the, the power of your light and bring it down so it it can be more balanced for your subject. Um, but yeah, I totally agree. Try to it's a lot of lighting and seeing what can you do um before you get into editing so whether that is you know if you're using artificial light making sure that your lights are good also making sure that your expose your 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 camera to where you want it to white balance is good as well um and then that way you know okay cool i have a solid foundation for when i go into editing but then if you don't you can use the tips that he mentioned earlier about you know reducing your exposure using your levels etc Yes, but preparation is going to be your best friend. Yes. Always. Because... I have learned that. You cannot, <laughs> when you mess up, you just, sometimes you got to take the L and that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I started, it was funny <laughs> because I would see things. I would never really be that detailed oriented. And I'm editing because I used to 
when I started, I would send the people I shoot with 60 photo edited photos. Mm -hmm. So oh, I'm yeah. editing 60 photos and I see that the guy has a bugger in his nose in every single every photo. photo. <laughs> I have to remove the bugger from 60 pictures. <laughs> so after that, I said never. So whenever I see a model, I say, let me look at you. Make okay. sure you're good. Yep. <laughs> So I try to do my best. I always tell my team, whether it's makeup, whether it's lighting, mm -hmm. they fix everything. So I don't have to do it in post. Because Absolutely. That this will save you. already a lot. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Let's everybody do their job properly. <laughs> <laughs> so how long would you say it kind of takes you um, to, how much time do you usually spend on the frequency separation? Honestly, it depends on the skin. It depends on uh, mm -hmm. what we have. Here, for example, we we don't have that much, but mm -hmm. we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. Um, it depends on also how detailed I want to be. Mm. Um, today, I want to be very detailed. I want a clean image. Um, so it varies from one hour to three hours. Okay. From one hour to three hours. And today, we're going to try to be done with this in... 30 minutes. <laughs> I, I, I almost say 15 and I say, eh, uh -uh. Yeah, so give yourself some time. Right. <laughs> yes, but frequency yeah. saturation, definitely you got to take your time with it, but yeah. the results are always so beautiful. Yeah. Very Penny <laughs> so it's very interesting when clients be like, hey, can I have the pictures tomorrow? It's like, oh, well. No, you, no, no, you can't. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I would like to sleep. <laughs> right. Because, mm, yeah. <laughs> awesome so yes yeah, someone said uh prep is important and then also <laughs> penny made a comment like or spinach in the teeth yeah I, you got to make sure the teeth are good <laughs> yes. yes and lip gloss on the teeth that's yes lip, common thing. yep lip gloss on the teeth lip gloss on the teeth um tag on the oh outfit. yes the if tag on the outfit yes. In return. <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> you, know, you know we gotta be resourceful our photographers on the budget yeah we have well, return yep make sure yep. the, the tag is not showing exactly <laughs> that has happened to me before yeah i think we've all been there <laughs> Dwayne said those are some white teeth i agree i'm like this is looking like their teeth is so stunning and just yeah, so straight and so teeth. Oh, i love, love it at them, but yeah I love um, uh, so just a quick uh, before and after yes before oh wow after, before after so as you see in the before his skin is already glossy mm -hmm. and all we did was removing the blemishes yeah we kept the natural and original texture mm -hmm. i'm really excited for but um, yeah so you guys this is this area right here is where it gets a bit challenging um because okay what I when I edit, I try to respect the lighting. Yeah. The way the sunlight hit them, I try to respect that. Okay, he is light. Okay, I'm sampling that side. He is dark. I'm doing that. But here, we have a lot going on, and uh, mm -hmm. that's when it sometimes gets tricky because you look at it. Oh my gosh, it's not all uniform. Yep. You, you panic. Um, but what I say is always follow the light. Yes. Just gonna figure out. So, for example, this area is a little bright, so I just go bright here. I just go oh, bright, sense. and I use the surroundings here to take care of this side. Yeah, I've definitely have had to start over mm -hmm. because <laughs> I had messed up that part. <laughs> And that hurts after three hours. Oh, no. That does hurt after three hours. But the other question that I, uh, I'm not sure if anyone else is thinking, but I think it could be good to explain. I see that you turned off the texture layer before you yeah. started editing the skin. Why is that? Um, well, first, if you do it with it, you won't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> If you if you let me try for you, if you edit it with it on, you won't see anything. Yeah. So it's yeah. important for you to turn it off. That way you can see exactly see. what you're doing. Yep. And when you so here's texture. Without texture, you're actually able to see what you're sampling. 
Mm -hmm. you be able to see the colors and you're actually able to see how they blend. Yes, absolutely. See what I'm doing here, how uh, it's just changing and I'm able to see here, for example, so I'm sampling right here. And, and then, the yep. Check. Absolutely. Oh. It is a very interesting process. It can be very tedious, but it's also a bit therapeutic. Yeah, I yeah, that's actually a very very good way to say it. I also think it can be very tedious, but it's kind of therapeutic, especially. I don't know if you edit with music, but sometimes I'll just like put something on and just being like you're in your own little like world when editing yeah. skin. <laughs> Dimmed lights. Yep. Dead candle. Yep. Music. That's yeah. what I do. <laughs> that's what I do. Editing is very interesting because whenever I had to get into it, just thinking of the fact that it's going to probably take me an hour to three hours mm -hmm. per picture. And I say, okay, I probably have 15 pictures or so to edit. I need to be ready. Yep, absolutely. So I don't get into it till I'm ready. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. Awesome. So let's keep going. And if y'all have any questions, Please drop in the chat. And let me ask you, friend. I did not know that you had only been doing this for three years. Yes. March 2023. Uh, wow. 2020. 2020 is when you started. I'm lying. Oh, my gosh. You guys. False accusations. <laughs> Hold on. March 2019. Okay. Oh, okay. This is my fourth year. Okay. So, wow. <laughs> Maybe okay. I had the car facts wrong. Like okay. Right. <laughs> false accusations i'm sorry you guys okay um so that was my third year and i'm i'm seeing my but still, yeah. but still you're still in your third Mom, year even yeah. even even for it to be almost like four years That's... your your journey is absolutely incredible i started off modeling mm -hmm. i started off modeling and i was working with a lot of photographers and as i was just working with all these people hmm Something was missing. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, they're not just able to bring my vision to life the way I want it. Mm. And I started film school. I am um, doing my undergrad in entertainment business. And I had a project. I also wanted to be a YouTuber. You guys, it was a long journey. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be a YouTuber and influencer. So I got a camera. And I had this project in class where we had to just do something. So I said, okay, I'm going to vlog. I'm going to style my classmates. I'm going to take pictures of them. Mm -hmm. In the pictures, I was like, oh, that looks like something. This is not bad at all. <laughs> and I had been admiring photography for years on Tumblr. So I was like, hold on. Is this my calling? It's your calling. And I just, I just got inspired. And I was able to just create things that were from me and by me mm -hmm. and truly me. And the door started opening as soon as I started. No, I love that. Oh, wow. Was I just doing the wrong thing? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it just takes a little bit of time to find where we're meant to be. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, so um, this, there is a question. How do you um, find your clients? Um, do, 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 do. Instagram is... I think my biggest source, Instagram and word to mouth. Mm. Um, Instagram, wherever you are as a photographer, make sure when you post a picture, I like to um, do that. When you when putting the hashtags, make sure you put whatever area you're in. For example, I'm in LA, so I always use hashtag LA photographer. Mm -hmm. A lot of clients of mine come to me oh i was looking for a photographer at the last minute yep. i just went into the la photographer yep. hashtag and i found your work mm -hmm. so that's a great way um i am very uh um fortunate to have built and to still i'm build build uh being building a platform with people that really support me mm -hmm. so whenever i post they really show up Aida, i thank you so much yeah they of really show up for me they reshare my post so <laughs> thing. reshare your friends work yeah share your, your friends, friends work your friends it, work because you never know where the next yes is going it, to be. and some people think that oh to like and comment on on your on someone's work is a small thing it absolutely is it, it yeah. just continues to push it out there more so if y'all yeah. have friends that are creatives, please share their work, especially as their friends. Sometimes I find that, you know, sometimes the biggest supporters are, are strangers. Yes. <laughs> so that as a friend, true. if you have a friend, it, it means a lot. It means a lot if you push out their work more. That is true. Um, I just posted, hey, guys, I'm about to be live with mm -hmm. Adobe. 
and somebody that I don't even know. Oh yep. my gosh, your work is so good. I'm glad you're receiving your flowers. I was like, oh That's, my God. I, thank you so much. You talking to me? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. No. Meanwhile, my friends looked at it and they didn't say nothing. <laughs> 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 They're sending their love from afar. Hi, it's a damn friend. Acknowledge me. <laughs> okay. Let me do this little part and show you guys. We have come a long way with. We even, have. With, with their forehead. With this we forehead. Have. And it's really like a work of precision. And yeah. the more you practice, the more you do it, the yeah. more you get used and the faster you're able to go. And the more you're able to see little details, you guys yes. are see me squinting at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and to make sure. But it is nice. I've noticed too, and, and I do this when I do retouching too. Um, it's really important to just, you know, take slow movements and and, and pick wherever you're picking from, know where you're adding. Yeah. Um, and so that's really, really good as far as just making sure that like you're just being precise in that way. Yeah. And uh, you guys will probably see I'm just doing a lot of content, body contention, just a lot of, you know, the face are tilted. Mm -hmm. so about to tilt. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta. Because, yep. <laughs> no, people are probably like, why won't you just rotate the picture? No, <laughs> no I can, I do the same the thing. You gotta <laughs> tilt the head. It Hashtag the tilt. When and I was don't... telling them to do that pose, if they're they're getting mm -hmm. back at me right now it's payback yep exactly <laughs> but listen if you don't feel it in your neck you're not tilting enough right. Tilt. <laughs> so sam has a question for us uh when you're looking for clients early on do they often come to you via instagram or did you have to reach out to companies and clients directly um for clients they usually reach out to me mm -hmm. um uh I say something that brings me a lot of clients is my creative work. This, for example, it was a creative collab. Um, just a little um, process update, you guys. Now, before, now. Love it. Before. Wow. I think we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good. Not too shabby. And we're respecting the skin tone, which I love. Mm -hmm. so we're going to keep going. But yeah, um, uh, people mostly reach out to me. Um I am now thinking of, uh, you know, adding something more to my strategy and actually reaching out to people because why not? Mm -hmm. you know, if it's a brand you've been wanting to work with, um, I'm the type of person I love to be prepared. Yeah. Prepared. So sometimes I won't reach out for an opportunity if I don't feel like my portfolio is good enough. Or if I don't mm -hmm. feel like sometimes I'm like, okay, I just did this shoot. It's amazing. I need it on my page before I reach out or work with this or this person mm -hmm. um so mostly they re mostly reach out to me they mostly reach out to me yeah. yeah and i love the one thing that i really love is also um you have a lot of creative work and i think that it's important as uh, as photographers we create the work that we want to be hired for so if you have that a project that you just did and it's amazing you love it throw that on your website yeah. let people see the kind of work you create um, and so that way it also lets them know what kind of quality they'll get from you as well. Yes. I actually have a little anecdote, very recent about that. Mm. As recent as last week. Um, uh, most of the work you see on my Instagram or on even my, uh, on my portfolio is my creative work. Mm -hmm. I directed things I just dreamed about and I'm like, okay, Hey, let's do this. And I have a client who wanted to shoot for her lookbook for her brand. Mm -hmm. she went over my website and she looked at my brand work and she looked at my work on Instagram and she said, Hey, Jorde, can you tell me what your process is? Because I'm looking at your brand work and I'm looking at the, the thing that's on your Instagram and it's just not the same. Mm. Like what's on your Instagram is better. Can you explain to me how does that work? Uh, did you do the brand work? I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay, that hurts a little bit, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, I get, I get, I get what you, where you're going with this. Um, well, what you see on my Instagram is fully me. And that's, I love that. Yeah. What's fully me is what people come to me for. Absolutely. And most of the client's work is kind of altered. My vision is altered and I still try to bring myself to it. But, you know, the clients come with a, a vision already. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want things done like this and like this and like that. Mm -hmm. Da, 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 da. So that, like on its own, kind of uh, influences your eye yeah. because now it's not 
only you it's not only your vision you're also respecting what the client wants absolutely um so it's very uh interesting follow your heart follow your artistry because that mm -hmm. is what will get you through the door yep i 100 percent agree um it's really just important to again create the work that you want to be hired for and it, it, it mm -hmm. just shows who you are you know, so then that way, I have some people that sometimes they'll come to me and they want me to do something. I'm like, did you look at my work? <laughs> I mean, just because I'm able to, I'm capable to, doesn't mean, you know, so it's also important. Like when you're looking for a photographer as well, look at their work and see where you feel like you align most with them. Um, Cause I feel like that, that's where you know that the end result is going to hopefully be, you know, yeah. what you were dreaming of. Yeah. And uh, I assume we have a bunch of photographers in the chat. Uh, if you're a beginner or whatever the case may be um implement this in uh, like when you start uh inquiring with clients insist on your aesthetic mm -hmm. insist on reminding them this is the work i do yeah um because i as of recent i've had a little traumatizing exper experience <laughs> um, oh. yeah i landed my first uh skincare um brand shoot okay the client wanted 25 edits. Okay. Mm. Um, hmm. Okay. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love your aesthetic. This is exactly what I want. The way you edit. Ugh. And then they're sending me references. I'm like, oh, this is exactly what I do. And mm -hmm. they say, oh my gosh. Ah, this picture you just posted. Yes, yes. This is exactly <laughs> what I'm looking for. I knew I had made the right decision when I booked you. Amazing. So you guys, I edited the 25 pictures. Mind you, I'm in grad school. So it's already very hard to, yeah. to do all that. Um, you know, so in the span of a couple of days, um, I edited 25 pictures and I sent it to them. Oh my gosh. Wow. Um, can we go a bit more natural? I said, huh? <laughs> so said basically they made me redo. All 25 edits. Yeah, they asked me to oh. read all the edits. So I was doing it in grad school. I had to um, shoot a film uh, as an assignment, yeah. uh, a 10 minute short. So it was just a lot of pressure. I'm yeah. cast producing. It's 3 a.m. I had to outsource. So I was yeah. doing it. And just the way I was doing it, it was just the way they explained it to me, it was just. Uh, before, after, before, after. Oh, love, <laughs> so, love, love, love. I love we multitasking here. <laughs> Whew, we're doing it, you guys. I'm looking at the time. I'm like, huh, those 30 minutes don't seem easy. <laughs> but you see, I'm going even a little faster um, and making sure even though I like leave some stuff out, it still looks very clean. Yes, yes. Because are we going to do some color grading for this as well? Yes. Perfect. So imagine I, I finished one face say anything i will do one face <laughs> and then we'll go into the color grading <laughs> oh, well, I, we got, we're good on time right well we have about let's say 50 minutes left okay we we got this we got this time yeah. is flying like yeah. where did those 35 minutes go i don't know yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so I had to outsource and pay a retoucher out of pockets because it was very tricky. What they yeah. were asking, I just realized that, oh my gosh, that is not the way I edit. And you booked mm -hmm. me and you saw the type of work I do. So now for you to out of nowhere send me new references and I'm like, okay, yeah, look at what you sent me. Look at the lighting we used. Everything is different. Yeah everything is different so and you know it's very hard sometimes clients are first timers they don't know much about photography or you know the work we do and you just have to explain you know um sometimes when i send the final edit mm -hmm. clients send me oh my gosh i wanted my skin to be glossy and i'm like well you did not do a glossy or gluey makeup mm -hmm. your makeup is matte <laughs> so how do you <laughs> i mean how do you want you me to know, do that? That's the thing <laughs> is that like people, you cannot create what isn't already like, that's not what I do. If you want your makeup to be glossy and dewy, please I beg, do a glossy and dewy look. If you want your makeup to be matte, do a matte look. 
<laughs> and that brings us back to preparation and the preparation. About lighting. Yes. You know, you cannot do the lighting very bright and mm -hmm. then try to make it dark in post. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of things we have to prepare for. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Because I'm not going to lie to you guys. You see this process already. It's been a minute and it's it's just it's just been one face. <laughs> but you know, you did say it it is a tedious process and yeah. it takes time. Yeah. We do have another question for you. Okay. Anika, thank you so much for, you know, I'm assuming this question came from YouTube, so thank you so much for bringing it over so I can see it. But what is your gear? Um and then what did you start with and then how did that change since you first started practicing photography? Nice. Uh I started with the Sony A5100. Um, it was mm. a prop sensor and, uh, I was just asking people, oh my gosh, what lens do I need to get? Get a 50. I said, okay. So I got a 50 millimeter. Um, I think it was a one point. No, it was not one. It was a 2.4. I think if I remember well, and mm. uh, I figured out that damn, I'm trying to do full bodies and <laughs> I have to move very far. Uh, so I upgraded to a 35 full frame mm. lens and, uh, it was still cropped. So I upgraded to the Sony a, uh, seven two, which is what mm. I still use to this day. I'm a Sony guy. Um, Sony a seven two and I upgraded to a 24 to 70 millimeter lens with a 1.8 aperture. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but yeah, that's my gear. Oh, love it. Thank you for sharing. Um, uh, anyone else a Sony gear user drop in the chat i'm a canon girl yeah you know but i'm not gonna lie sony i'd be eyeing sony like i'd just be like hmm maybe <laughs> oh oliver said oliver said is it sad that i can tell oliver said is it sad that i can tell it's sony from the file extension <laughs> LOL. <laughs> oliver, are you a sony guy too listen oliver loves sony we just love that i must yes. I, am i the only canon girl up in here like <laughs> You know what? Uh, I'm so used to this file extension that I didn't even know it was proper to Sony. Yeah. So what is okay? What is the file? Oh, A W A R W. Um. The D S C. Mm, D S C A dot dot. I know Canon is like dot whatever the file is dot C R two or something like that when it's a raw. Uh, I don't know. Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he said I'm a Canon guy. <laughs> uh, okay. <Oops. laughs> I just be very ready to rename the file. So I know I exactly. I just be like, mm. <laughs> and then real quickly before we continue on, I want to make sure to let you guys know that if you want to recommend yourself or someone you know and love to be a guest on Adobe Live, please submit your recommendations for creatives in the tab on Behance. So if you look up above the chat, you're going to see where it says chat info and then guest recommendations. So click on that. So then that way you can recommend someone. We'd love to see all of the creatives that you guys recommend. We would love to get some of them on here on the Adobe Live. So please do that. And Oliver, you're right. Yes, Canon is CR2 or CR3. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. This face. Uh, this is the head tilt for me. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched your head continue just I by degrees. I, I'm like, let me see. I got to make sure I'm getting it right. It's like, wait. Okay. And it's so interesting, you guys. Uh, this is a very interesting area that I'm doing here. Oh, you that the chin it, area is very in difficult. Its own. Yeah, it's very you difficult. You have so many tones, so it's like, okay, I am trying to boom. So I take from the lighter part and I kind of like brush slightly on the darker tone. Mm -hmm. Like from the fold. I think this is a that's a pimple. That's not a beauty mark. No, I don't think that's a beauty yeah, mark. That's the blemish. <laughs> See, this is the struggle. So it's like, okay, is this a pimple? Or is it like a... Is it, is it <laughs> okay, boom. There you go. Uh, LL, a general said you could rotate the canvas. That's a good good trick. We did mention that earlier, we general. <laughs> <laughs> he prefers to just... <laughs> yeah, you know, I want the full experience. <laughs> you know, when I was telling... When I thought about this pose and I was like, okay, do this. No. Put your head on. They were going through it. We stayed like this for a moment. So, you know, I feel like it's payback. It's payback, payback for you. <laughs> step in their shoes and be like, okay, let me 
feel yes. the pain you felt. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> and then I hope I'm saying Kieran has said that um they're enjoying the vibes between the both of us. Great design yeah, discussion yeah. sprinkled with laughter. It's a win win. Oh, we I love, love that. It. We that love it. West Africans. I know that's come right. On, come on. <laughs> <laughs> OMG. So this is coming together very, 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 yeah. very well. Beautiful. Okay. To be honest, with everything else we have to do, I think this face is fine. <laughs> <laughs> this face is fine. Um, I agree. <laughs> yeah, this is a bit bright, so I'm just gonna like flash it a bit. See you guys, I'm very perfectionist. So even though I say ah, it's a little bit, but I'm just gonna do this real quick. No, take your time, uh -huh. take your time. We ain't Make going nowhere. Well, not right. for another <laughs> minutes. <laughs> okay, we got this. I'm about to attack the other face. Honestly, I think we, we got this. Yes. We get in there. Where did the idea of the shoot come from for you? I, you know, sometimes it's very uh, interesting. I was just sitting there mm -hmm. and I made this mood board and I just wanted two people because the twins hit me up and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I've always wanted to shoot twins. So that's yeah. perfect. Let's do it. And um, I saw a reference picture where they had, they were sagging. They had denim on and they were sagging with mm. um, boxers. And I was like, hmm, I would like to do the same, but I would like to layer denim jeans. Mm. So um, I'm going to try and show you guys one of the full body pictures so you can like, kind of like see. Ooh, I want to see. <laughs> and honestly, I'm not mad at the skin. You know what? We're going to focus on the face. Just so yeah, one thing I, I've always admired about your work is just your dedication to your creativity. Um, you are one of the photographers, like the kind of work that you create. I'm like, how did you even think to go in? Like, <laughs> there was a photo, the photo you showed me yesterday. My mind was blown. Like I was yes. like, love it. Absolutely love it. It's, um, I really try to surpass myself. I try yeah. to make every shoot better than the, the last. last one. Yeah, of course. And it's really, I'm very artsy. I love to create things I could see in the museum. Mm. I like to create things that make me go wow. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's different. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, you guys, I think we did it. Yes, I think so. Yes. Oh, before yeah. and after. Yes, love it. And I think um, Silpil, it looks very, very natural. Yes. Um, it doesn't feel look like you went and like blurred anything. You could still see that texture, which is absolutely amazing. We yeah. do have another question for you. Um, what is your process in coming up with new concepts for the photo shoots? Is there something in particular that you find to be inspiring? Something in particular that I find to be inspiring. I just love throwing her name everywhere, Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell y'all something real quick okay Pick out beyonce tickets i don't know if y'all are out here struggling in these streets to get these listen, tickets I, listen i'm a certified <laughs> behind they knew they gave me a pre-sale codes i got it i spent a lot of money but it's okay <laughs> but <laughs> honestly um we inspire me yeah um just being able to show us in a different light, you know, because mm. ready to be boxed, you know, oh, they're strong, the strong black woman character. Yeah. Or, oh, they did this, that, that, that. I'm like, we are so much. We are strong. We are soft. We are beautiful. We are feminine, masculine. It just comes in all shapes, yeah. forms, and shades, and everything. And, um, absolutely. I, make sure that the people I found on Instagram inspire me. So I would see yes. something and I would like, oh, okay, what you did is beautiful. I'm doing an extension of that. <laughs> How do I make my own interpretation of this? I film students, so I had to watch a lot of movies. I would see some movie scenes and some shots. I'm like, oh, this is brilliant. Mm -hmm. This is giving me an idea. I would look at sculptures, you know, if I go mm. to the or if I look at paintings, paintings, oh my gosh, this sculpture is interesting. How can I make it my own? Yeah. And uh, yeah, you just... I love that. You yeah. can find inspiration from really anywhere. And I really feel like um, that that art is just... Everyone is inspired by someone else. Yeah. And so it's just a way to take something... I don't think there's any... You never want to take someone's art and copy it. But you want to... If you find something to be inspiring, ask yourself, what is it about this that I love? 
And like you said, how can I take what I love from what I'm seeing and make it my own? Exactly. And then you just kind of, you just have everyone's become, it's just an extension of just great art that continues to recreate itself. Yeah, so yeah. I love it. I, I think that's the best way to put it in. Follow people that inspire you because that's exactly. the stuff that's going to fill up your cup as a creative. I know that it's easy to get into um, creative funks sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I was struggling with one. I just got out of mine. I just got out of it. So, <laughs> but follow people that inspire you and, and, and that'll keep you, you know, kind of going and wanting to continue to create. Yes. I love people who create things that is just out of the norm. That's mm -hmm. not simple. I love a variety. I follow a variety of phot photographers like you, beautiful work. And thanks. I also love people who just defy gravity. So like, oh yeah. my gosh, how did you think of that? Yes. So I want to be part of these people that just, you know, come up with something new. So I always make a mood board. Um, mm. It's really hard to uh, put into perspective something that's in your brain yeah. because sometimes nobody has done it. So it's very hard to uh, um, uh, convey in a mood board. So most of the times the the execution is always, always different than the brand, as it Absolutely. should. Absolutely. And we have another question. So someone said, I see you turning the, the texture layer on and off. Is that a preset you usually use? Texture, uh, on and off, it's to see my progress. Mm -hmm. It's to see my progress, to see how far, oh, this is beautiful. Do you see this? I know, okay. <laughs> it is. Before, <laughs> after, before, after, this is beautiful. Yes. So um, when I do this, I'm able to see things in a different way, so look. Boom, it's very bright. We have all the texture. The texture goes away. So and that way you can see what you're doing. Yep. Exactly. So for example, in this area, I can see that this is a part I need to sample to mm -hmm. in. You can see it a lot clearer now. The other thing too, um, I think we talked about this briefly in the beginning, is that the process of, so right now he's doing frequency separation, which is separating the skin, the texture from the skin. So then that way you can really go in there and, 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 clean up the skin while maintaining the overall texture and natural look of the skin. Um, and so if y'all want details on frequency separation, I'm sure there's something on Behance or even on YouTube that you can go in to get that deep, deep dive into how to create the texture layer and how to have the skin layer. But this is what the overall process is. Yes. Well, he had the drag on before and so Oh, you, and you got the line. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the line that I'm removing. Yep. My neck. <laughs> it would be so much easier to rotate it, but I'm dedicated. It's too late now. It's the way your your head went this way. I know. And now is this way. Oh my! I didn't even notice. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm watching. I'm watching. Ah, oh so my nervous. goodness, that is so oh funny. I see that some people have followed you on Instagram. Um, they keep throwing your Instagram in the chat, so y'all keep following him. That is beautiful. And we have about. What is it? Twelve twenty my time. So we're about thirty five more minutes before we start to close, but I think we have made a lot of progress with the yep. skin for sure. Thirty five is perfect. I feel like in fifteen, in in ten. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, like it's, no, it, it's. I think it's important to show how. Yeah. You you really how when you take your time the impact it really has. This like yeah. frequency separation can it's really a game changer. I when I first started editing, um, I was just doing all my editing in like Lightroom, mm -hmm. and using like like you know the the healing brush. There's yeah. you can do the clone and stuff like that, and I find that to be you know if you want an easy easy option, especially in the beginner stage. That is great. Those are great tools to use to kind of take care of maybe like you know a blemish here or there or a pimple. Um, but when you really get into the deep skin editing, the magazine looking billboard ready, clear, <laughs> mm -hmm. clear as day skin, frequency separation, utilizing Photoshop is definitely a great option. Yes. Shout out to Photoshop. Shout, Shout out, out to, to Photoshop. Adobe. And there's different ways to do it. I also see that some people do their skin editing with dodging and burning. Yes. Um, so that's another ask, another um, tool that process that could be used to get you know similar results which is i'm actually trying to get into me too i haven't tried i i, I i've thought about it and i'm like dang do i want to i know teach myself something else but i have heard that a lot of people like yeah 
uh, especially like the people that do like pro retouching, yeah, really prefer to use yes. um, dodging and burning opposed yeah. to using frequency separation. So I've realized that I've kind of been um, getting the that little dodge and burn results with my frequency separation. Mm -hmm. I'm like, huh, interesting. Do I, do I really need it? Uh, <laughs> so, I, did I do that? <laughs> right. You know, because I feel like I've I've started like respecting the light and just follow. Yeah, just my follow head. the light. Yes. And that's all it is. Dodging and burning is is just, you know, you're 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 trying to highlight or contrast the certain areas of, of the face. So you like it's really just the concept of following where the light falls. Yeah. So I love that. Do I really? Because I know how hard it was learning frequency separation. I know. <laughs> but like, you know, like, that's... Learning new thing. Think about just it being another tool that you add to your toolbox yeah. as a photographer, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Maybe something... Right. Sometimes you need a little something new to learn. Yeah. <laughs> I love challenging myself. I love doing things. Now I'm uh, learning how to... Uh, you know, change the colors and mm. like that. Because, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, love, love, love. Okay, I'm just going to make my brush a little bigger. Oh, I really wish I was a twin. Uh, I and I also want, I want to shoot with twins. I, I don't know any twins out well, here to shoot with in Arizona. To I need to come to LA. I need to book a flight to go to LA. That's, that's the real tea. I need to book my flight to go to LA. I've been playing games. You go, boom. So this is looking really clean and nice. Of course, um, just another reminder, if you guys did that already, you make sure you drop off your guest recommendations in the chat or right there in the slot right above the chat. So then that way we can get some recommendations. And then if y'all have any more questions as we continue throughout the chat, that would be lovely. Mm -mm -mm. This is beautiful. Coming together quite nicely. Try and make sure and give some decent results in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. I think we should almost be uh, good with the. Um... Okay, so usually I go even more detailed than that, but when I edit, for example, this, I don't worry too much because when I'm done and when I remove the thing with the texture layer i now use my um brush tool mm -hmm. my brush tool to kind of blend everything in yeah lightly so sometimes you don't there are certain details you can omit there are certain details you can be like okay this is okay because yes. the mixer brush would just boom bring it all together bring it all together absolutely absolutely <laughs> Your head started here again, and then you went. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. It just makes it all interesting. Oh, the other thing is Anika. Man, Anika's trying to make sure we are good. Ooh. <laughs> they said, "Have we saved our process, our progress so far? Have you have you saved everything?" Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and save. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make sure, you know, we don't Honestly, want any... It saves automatically, which is what I love with my yeah. thing. I don't know why, like, when I'll be so focused, and then I will see that... This has saved, annoying. yeah. Like, Thank you. You got my back. <laughs> you got my back. Because when it's a new file like that, it just wants to save the thing, which pieces... Yeah. And I'm like, no, we're not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Anika. Okay. Yes, because we, we want to... <laughs> We acting really beginner here. <laughs> we gotta make sure, like <laughs> yes. I, I I have seen too many times in my own life where I have not saved a file and my computer then said, Boop. Ooh, ooh. It didn't want to work. I just recently got a new MacBook computer because I said, We're not playing those games. Yeah. yeah. I didn't want to spend the money, but eh, it is what it is. Sometimes you gotta upgrade your I had to upgrade my 2014 MacBook Pro. So <laughs> Yeah, it was a 2014. What were you doing? The air was I, well. I have a desktop that I used to, but uh, okay. The air in that app, that map, that laptop, I hadn't touched it in maybe a year and a half. Okay. I I hadn't touched it because it was like it would get so hot when mm -hmm. I would use different programs and everything. So I went and got one of the 
you know, the Apple M1 books, you know, and I'm not gonna lie, it's nice. I'd be editing and I don't hear, it's silent. That's what I like to hear, <laughs> silence. No spaceship noise. No, no spaceship noise, okay? I don't want to hear a single thing, nothing. Mm. <laughs> Please, be and quiet. Yes. Because why are you exposing me in public? Uh, it, exactly, <laughs> I don't need anybody else knowing I'm here working hard. <laughs> In fact, you're even making it sound like I'm exhausting you, lady. <laughs> this exactly. small editing that I'm doing, you're exhausted. What's going on? <laughs> Girl, are you struggling? Can you? Can you yeah. No, not at all. This is coming together. Yes, Anika, we will not forget to save. Save <laughs> and stretch. That's the other thing. Take a sip. Yeah. See, just... Save the uh, stretch, especially the neck. I know, <laughs> I know your neck is hurting because my neck is hurting watching you. Uh, <laughs> see, it was the dedication. That's what <laughs> people don't see, like you know. <laughs> and then you share it, and they sleep on you, or you know, people take the process for granted, and a lot goes into it. Yeah, a lot definitely goes into it. I mean, we've even the time. Just the time is a huge component as well. Yeah. That's why that time you had to go back and um, you were asked to re-edit those 25 photos is, yeah. especially if you spent this much time and, and dedication in it. Ooh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was painful. But so. the good thing you did say was like, it is also important as creatives. Um, this is the, the space that I'm starting to go into is being able to know when it is important to just outsource. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's another thing that I've seen a lot of photographers talk about. Um, <clears throat> I think as a photographer, I love, I do all of my editing yeah. because it's just, I, it's my style. It's what I do, but I have, there might be times where you just have to say, you know what? I have to outsource. <laughs> yeah. I cannot come and kill myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. I cannot come and struggle and that's like a, a saying in like the African community. <laughs> For, I want to make sure I say that it's a saying in the African but. community. <laughs> um, but um, you want to just make sure that you are prioritizing your your what you have as your priorities, your health, yeah, your well being. So outsourcing is a smart thing to do when you get into uh, stressful situations. Um, I so this is my last year of uh, grad school. My mm -hmm. friendship is insane. So. I was not able to be as active. I would do collabs and you guys, I'm not gonna lie. I'm going, to, I was going to school Monday to Friday and sometimes Saturday, Sunday. Mm. Uh, Monday to Friday from 8.40 to 6.40 PM. Mm -mm. And uh, Saturday, Sunday, we had class school projects we had to shoot. So we'll probably finish at 11 PM and uh, midnight sometimes, 1 AM. Wow. So that left me no time to edit. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Some of my collabs, my non-paid shoot, I would return them a month after, five months after, because mm -mm. I <clears throat> didn't have time. And what I realized, it made me less active on social media. Yeah. You know, when it comes to sharing my work, it made me less active. And I'm like, hmm, hmm, I should have <laughs> gotten a retoucher, you know, but I'm so... Uh, I'm sensitive about my art. I same. You know, so it's like, mm -hmm. uh, do I trust somebody, <laughs> you know, would I trust somebody else to pay that much attention? And, you know, yeah. So find people that you believe in, that you trust. Yes. Will kind of match your aesthetic. And if you can't do it, please do yourself a favor and yes, yes, yes. Share the load. Absolutely. Uh, Sam said, good morning. To Good both morning. of us. Good morning, Sam. What's up, Voodoo Val? How are you? How are y'all doing up there in the chat? Hope you guys are having a wonderful day. <laughs> <laughs> so we have made a lot. Okay. You really, you really did two faces. I, I did. You did two faces. And we're almost done. <laughs> See, and we got like what 20? 20 more, like 20, 25 more minutes left. So <laughs> it, that is good because we can get into that. Mm -hmm. uh, that that color grading portion yeah. as well for this image and it'll be really exciting to see um how far we would have came and i really just love like you guys are learning we'll be able to learn essentially yeah. um the skin retouching as well as the color grading which are two massive great tools to to take into your workflows 
Oh, and the Misty said, congratulations on finishing grad school. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, they finished in December. Congrats, Misty. <laughs> oh, me too. I finished December. Hey. I, I finished December and I have my thesis project uh, in the, during the summer. And after that, I'm going to see Beyonce to release the wiggle. Yes. That's what I need. <laughs> Because listen, that is your graduation gift. That's why yeah. don't, don't ask how much money was spent. So, okay, is a graduation gift to yourself. Just, just, just look at the enjoyment when it comes. Mm -hmm. I hope I've been helpful in any way to you guys. Um, yes. By watching, I hope you're running anything at all. Uh, let me know if you have any more questions. Yes, yeah, so if you have any more questions, please drop them in the chat before we get to the point of closing. We still have a little bit of time. So, if y'all have questions, please drop them or let's do this also if you guys if anyone just recently joined um do you want to just quickly just cover um what we've done so far um yeah so we have this image oof wow. Ooh. Wow. we that just oh. slap, it slap 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 me okay. in the face okay so, real quick before after yep before and after okay we made progress clean Absolutely beautiful but still have all the texture and yes yeah just beautiful i'm just gonna work on the nose bridge they have uh that discoloration here that i don't want to get rid of yes but, like it adds character and it's very natural so i'm just gonna slightly brush over this blemish that i see here yes that's the i i love that you said that because i think it's also very important when you get into the retouching phase as a photographer to keep the things that are natural and make that person who they are yeah um i remember when i first got into retouching um i was so excited she said i would retouch everything <laughs> <laughs> and i had yes. one friend one really good friend she has a like mark right here in her forehead mm. and i retouched it because i thought <laughs> okay, cool. Maybe she don't want to see the mark in the photo. And the first response she said was, where's my mark? <laughs> I said, oh, let me, let me go back and yeah. take care of that. So keep yeah. the things that make, you know, those, whether it's like a birthmark or a certain, a mole, stuff like that, that make that person who they are, because yeah. usually those are the things that they don't want retouched out. It still yeah. adds that character and yeah. kind of makes it true to who they are. One thing about it, I always ask, because yes. sometimes those are not conversations we have uh, prior to shooting. And it's after you shoot, you actually realize, oh my God, this person has a, has a better mark in all these pictures. Mm -hmm. oh, they have a scar. And, mm -hmm. you know, scars, trauma, just different things, you know, um, that's meaningful to people. So I always yeah. ask, hey, this scar right here, um, do you mind if I remove it? Or mm -hmm. uh, don't. most of the time they say no, and I never want to remove those things either way. Yep. I'm like, yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, he has stretch marks here. I think it adds so much character. Yes, yeah. Leave I will never it. touch this. Yeah. You know, I think it's beautiful. Now, if the person says they're not secure with that, okay, boom. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think. We are safe to move, honestly. Mm. Lovely. Let me see here. Um, okay. Right. Yes. Oh, Gareth actually put a really great tip. So if they are temporary blemishes, remove them. If they are more permanent, keep them. And I agree with that. If there's, right. because, you know, sometimes, I mean, right now my skin is cooperating, but mm -hmm. <laughs> there are times where it's not. So if it's a temporary thing, you know, you want to remove them, make sure that, that they're not there, but whatever is like more permanent, yeah, I do agree to keep them because again, it's it's what makes that person who they are, and you want them to be recogn recognizable. Um, that's the you want you know. I don't want to take it, ever have my name stamped on a photo that I took of someone, and they're like, mm, "That's not that person." <laughs> I, that's very, level I believe yes. in. I'm very natural in my process. Yeah. Um, recently, I've had a client. Um, after this trauma with that other client, I made sure that everything was looking very natural. Mm -hmm. And so I did her edits and she wasn't happy with it. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but then I hit all the marks she asked for. Yeah. And out of nowhere, she just asked for new things. Hey, I have this hump on my back. Can you remove it? I'm like, ooh. Ooh. 
You want no, me to do that? I, I don't know how to do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done that before. Um, I did not think you were gonna ask. This is you, this is just out of nowhere. And this is two months after I sent her the pictures. Hey, yeah, yeah. no, I'm sorry. The edited, it, edited pictures. It, the edited like the shoot was done. Like in my yeah. head, you you closed out that project. And I edited the pictures, I sent it to them, and I said, Hey, let me know. Two, two months, months later, later. Hey. I'm yeah. just looking at the pictures. I'm like, are you serious? I said, mm, you're and even better than me. Is the way I would have been like, what pictures? <laughs> <laughs> and I was just about to start the semester again in January. I'm like, oh, yeah. What the timing? Why the timing? The timing okay. is off. So, you guys. Lovely. Yes. Let's see what this looks like. The skin. So, what I'm going to do now is, okay, if you notice, after everything we've done, you see just, you know, the tiny little bumps, uh, some crest on the lips and all. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going on my texture layer and I am changing this little mode here to replace. Mm. Oh. So now I come and uh, I'll show you what it does. So for example, I sample here, this smooth part and remove yeah. this. Remove this. And you're remove still this. using your healing brush, correct? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Boom. So when I do this, I try to leave some, so it still looks nice and natural. Boom. Mm, when some said um, some permanent features slash blemishes can be softened to the liking, absolutely. Yeah. And boom. And so right here on the lip. Lips, yeah. Moving this, moving that. Boom. Editing can be so satisfying. It really can. It really, really can. What do you, what is your music of choice when you're editing? It depends on the mood. Um, I like, mm -hmm. I like something that calms me down. So yeah. acoustic music. Mm -hmm. I would do a lot of Afrobeat, a lot of Thames. When mm -hmm. she says, I am. Mm. <laughs> My soul lives higher. Yes. <laughs> you know? I yeah, can't, shout out to Thames. Uh, I can't listen to Beyonce too much because I you, take a lot of you, breaks and I perform. Yeah, you gonna you be know? performing, not editing. <laughs> I need to work, so I can't listen to something I like too much. I need to, you know, listen to something that's chill. Yeah, I agree. Know? Because if it's high tempo, I would just take a break and just feel the lyrics too much, and yeah, nothing I, I can relate to hot wise at the moment mm -hmm. just or oh, then i would just stop in mm. <laughs> pull my heart out no i absolutely okay. agree um boom mm. and then i know we're gonna get into the skin retouching or yeah. sorry not skin retouching the color grading too okay. um uh, i think i'm interested to see when you're color grading how you maintain the skin tone that of is. your subject to you know um yeah. not change it because like you mentioned before that there are photographers that don't understand the nuances that come with shooting different skin tones and yeah. skin complexions um this is a reason why i tend to not use presets for this reason because sometimes mm -hmm. a lot of people rely on presets yeah. and what it does is what a preset might do to someone who's more fair skin it won't do to someone that is maybe of a darker complexion so you need to be mindful of um i've seen photographers use maybe like that orangey skin t skin yeah. um or start that orangey preset that might be really great for some skin tones and complexions but are not great for all um and presets are not a, i like to say they're not a one size fits all so sometimes you want to make sure that you are doing things on an individual basis and making sure okay this is what my subjects look like i want them to you know still look this way in, okay. in all of the photos you guys i'm just gonna stop here i should have moved i should have worked on this a bit more but it's okay we okay got it. we got it because we gotta move so <laughs> What I'm going to do now, you guys, I'm going to go to my healing brush tool. Boom. Oh, no. What am I talking about? My mixer, mixer brush, brush tool. <laughs> my mixer brush tool. Let's go like this so I can see what it's doing. Uh, I like the size. Boom. Plain brush. And slightly. You have to be gentle with this one. Yeah, you got to be gentle. You, <laughs> you go on your skin. Make sure you're on your skin later. And same thing, you respect the different areas of the skin. Mm -hmm. 
So about because it samples and it copies, yes, copies and wanna... paste. Yep. So you have to be careful, you know, because then you're gonna transfer certain shades. Yep. Where you you so want to be careful. Just... Ooh, Penny made a good comment. She said, um, "Presets out there trying, presets out there trying, but never, not the never the same. Oh, so, yeah, so presets are trying, but they're never the same as the genuine human touch. And that is a great, great way to say it. I agree with that because um, I, I just feel like this is something I, I love editing. I love taking the time, and it just it makes me feel closer to the subjects. It makes me feel." I don't know, you add your own human touch to it. So yeah. that is a great way to really state it. I love but... that you guys called me out today because yeah. I was going to use a preset. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to use a preset, but no, 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 everything no, no. you said is things I've been struggling with because <laughs> what I do... <laughs> Wait, pause. <laughs> <laughs> not me talking about presets. See, Edar, this is why you close your mouth. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. But presets uh, are still good. But I'm not saying no, that I'm no. good. Oh, please don't come for me. Oh. <laughs> okay. So you guys, I was gonna touch up the teeth a bit, but no, later. Um. So here's what we've done so far. This is a before, and this is the after. Before, after. I want you guys to see. Lovely. The before and the after still looks very natural, just plain. Um, and what I always do, I go to image and I auto contrast every day, mm -hmm. every single time. Okay, now Love it. please, oh, use your preset. Don't be listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> use your preset as long as it's maintaining the skin tone. Just use your preset. Because <laughs> also you can create. Um, I you can also create presets that if overall that like, the color or the tones is what you're going for mm -hmm. then then you can just use that and save yourself the time of set of just repeating the same steps over and over again so you guys something i don't want you to look at this something i did here you see this little spot. yeah i don't like it they just like this little round white yeah, circle. yeah it's something i will go later and actually match with this okay make it make sense but for today we are moving on same. Lovely. And we have about 10 minutes left before we start to close. That's actually perfect. So what I usually do, I love to... Okay, I'm going to say. So boom, I go to my files. I go to export and I go to save for web. Mm. That's how I like to do it. Why do you save for web? Uh, It keeps the quality for Instagram. Mm. It keeps the quality very neat for Instagram and mm -hmm. uh, my website is for the web. <laughs> it's for the web. <laughs> well, okay. Okay. This is one downside of it. <laughs> it's, it's the way the thing is spinning. Ooh. Okay. It's coming. We got it. It's saving. We got it. Okay. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> No, no, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It is coming. It has no choice but to come. Uh, and we have saved our progress. Thank God. Yes, we've oh, saved it. And yeah. it could be saved. <laughs> mm -hmm. Whew, we did it. Beautiful. Okay. So I always go to original. And bam. I already named it. I already know where my file is going to be. Perfect. And it should be here in any time now. Um, so now we're going to go into Lightroom as soon as it saves. Um, uh, I, the presets are very pigmented, mm. very pigmented. Um, I tried to play, um, with one of the pictures this morning to see what I could do color wise. Cause I love to have a film, Yes, yes. you know, um, feel to it. But they are very pigmented, and so apply the filter, re uh, the preset. I reduce it, and I go into the settings to mm, kind of make it yes. work. Yes, because yeah, I don't know how you guys be getting your feels. Yes, we did it. Yay! But I think that's a bit important part with using with utilizing presets is that I think presets can be um, customizable. So even if you have, they're great to have a start. 
to whatever your edit is and get like the overall look. And then you just kind of where you need to tone down, where you need to make some changes, you can go into the actual settings and do so. So I think that's really important thing to, to note. And was that the final image I saw? Cause that was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was another one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it's time. Okay. Just gonna make it a little bigger. Just like that. And uh, let's go. Okay. And are these presets that the ones that you're going to use, did you create them or uh, where did you, because I know some people you can either create them or I know some great people that create presets for sale as well. Um, these ones I did not create. The one I'm going to use is actually one that I found here. Oh, okay. Ooh. So I'm hesitating between this or this, but I think I'm going to go for this. Yeah, I think I like the 09. Um, it's just okay. the richness and the, the, the tone it's of the very skin. Yeah. rich and very pigmented. Yes. It's a challenge. So let's see what it does. <laughs> I also really love that this, what, um, when um, Adobe added this slider mm -hmm. to the presets, oh my gosh, <laughs> okay, game changer. So what I always do is I always go back to see actually what it's doing to my picture. Yes. So by doing this, I see that this effect has a lot of reds, mm -hmm. a lot of reds, and I'm kind of happy with this part right here. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's beautiful. This part right here. So we're gonna go now into our exposure. Uh, just a little bit, maybe 10 is fine. Mm -hmm. Highlights, I love my highlights. Just, just keep it to 15. Hmm, she's a little bright. Beautiful. Um, oh, let me see. The blacks, I actually, because you see the, the white in the background and the highlight on their mm -hmm. skin is a bit much. So I'm liking the way it looks yeah. like this. It goes a little darker. I'm not mad at this. No, that's beautiful. Let me see what we're doing here. Boom. Let me preserve the highlight. Mm -hmm. Boom. Okay, colors, 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 colors. I see this is actually has residues of. Uh -uh. And it's so, it's such a game trying to figure out the right balance of yeah. everything. Because, see, if I go like this, then mm -hmm. I'm going to black and white, I'm losing. So yep. presets are a challenge. They are. They absolutely <laughs> they are. are a they challenge, are a challenge. And working with them is very interesting. Uh, our dear beloved Vignette that we love so yes. much. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sharpening. As usual, I'm even going to put it at 12 again. Okay. That's beautiful. I'd be scared to touch this little tool right here. <laughs> Really? Oh, it's my favorite tool. <laughs> but today, that, that is, to that's, us, that, 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 yep. <laughs> that's nice. And it's so what I'm trying to do because my preset is looking a little greenish. Mm -hmm. so what I'm trying to do is get the melanin back out, you guys. Yes. yes. So with this, I just did it. I mean, I want to like tweak it a bit, but I'm scared. <laughs> so I'm like, do I remember what I did? Ah! Okay. Okay. <laughs> Let's just not do the most. Ooh. That's beautiful. And then editing black skin is so interesting because you have to be careful to wear you, you don't do. orange. Yes. Yes. This see, we went orange and now we're going a little too dark. And you just need the right amount. Balance. Okay, I think this is the right balance. That is beautiful, okay. yeah. I agree. Let's see how highlights. Oh, mm -mm. Uh oh, <laughs> there's a control over here. Okay, so we're gonna make sure we keep, we stay within the oranges. Okay, I'm not mad at that. That is stunning. That is so, so beautiful. But I think, I like I said before, the one thing that I really appreciate what you've done is you, you've pointed out where you need to make the adjustments in your edit, in your settings. 
So then that way it's it's specific to the two subjects you have in this image yeah. and this for the specific shot. So I, I think that's that's the overall point when using presets that you want to make sure that you don't just drop it and leave, make your adjustments, make sure it really fits the image and the, the subjects that you're shooting. So this is absolutely stunning. Wow, you guys. And we have about two, three more minutes before we start to close y'all. But wow. I okay. I think, hold on. What, what's I, what say, I think we have it, but no. Let me remove some red. Mm. Uh oh. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Okay, so I see yellows. Okay, this is where I went wrong. Yeah. It's so interesting because sometimes as you slide down, you don't see what. You don't see it. Yeah. <laughs> what's that? Okay. What's going on? Okay, boom, just like right here. Lovely. And Anika did drop your website and Instagram. Make sure you guys go ahead and check out his website and give a give him a follow on Instagram. I hope you really enjoyed this live today. Yes, you guys. Yes. I think we, have, we have it. Yes, we have oh, love, 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 love. Um, I hope y'all really enjoyed this live and also wanted to quickly give a shout out to our mods in the chat. Y'all have been doing a great job and thank you for everyone that has participated in this chat as well. Uh, so thank you mods for all the great work. You know what? We're going to add just a, a little grain. Why not? A little, you know, just a little. <laughs> a little <laughs> razzle yeah. dazzle. <laughs> you know, just to add to the aesthetic. Yes. Yeah. Oh, love. And... Come on. <laughs> uh, will we be able to put this side by side with the original? Ooh, ideally, let's make it. Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. I would love to see yeah. what that before and, and that after. after. Uh, boom. Mm -hmm. okay. It's giving. There you go. So this is the before. And then... Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I'm not good at putting things side by side. <laughs> but we're going to try. We are going to try. Wait, where is... Uh... Where's your Lightroom? Lightroom, there you uh -huh. go. Oh, My babe. There Hold we on. go. Let me even close this. There you go. And uh, <clears throat> side by side. Huh, I wish I could make it bigger. So... so. Beautiful, that before and that after. Absolutely stunning. Uh oh. Uh oh. There it's it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There it is. Boom. There you go. And boom. There you go. Oh, love. This is wow. absolutely stunning. Wow. Jordan, thank you so much for joining us today and just for giving us an incredible session. I hope y'all learned a lot because me, I'm always learning, and this is one of my favorite photographers. So <laughs> that's my favorite. I love my idea. Thank you so you know? much for having me. <laughs> of oh my course, God. I'm of so course. Excited. No, this is incredible. And if you missed any part of the the live stream, of course, y'all can always go back to YouTube or Behance. It will be recorded for you to go ahead and watch. Nice. I definitely say make sure you save this in your favorites because you will be referencing it again. <laughs> Hope and that make can sure. Help. Go ahead. I say I, I hope anything I said or anything I did could yes. help you guys in the future. Yes. Um, it's it's going to be on YouTube. So, hey, if you need to go back and, oh, how did he do that? Go and watch it again. And watch I'm open. Again. My DMs are open. Anybody love that needs it. any tips, I'm always here. I just, I'm love on it. I love sharing. Yes. Today. So go ahead and reach out if you have any questions. But want to make sure you all stay tuned. Enjoy Ray and AKA Pixie Poo for a new episode of Animation 101. And this week's episode, you'll be learning about squash and stretch and how to use them to convey weight to take, to take your animations to the next level. So thank you all so much. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. And we'll see you next time. Yes. Bye. Bye.